Ha in Hawaiian is a Hawaiian word for breath. Mana, as many people know, means power or powerful. So when you say the phrase mana ka ha, it means there's power in your breath. I honestly can't remember what it's like to take a big deep breath. The idea of just being able to breathe in deep and blow out, that's pretty exciting. Every day that you can get up and you can take a deep breath, that's a good day, right? Both my parents lived into their 90s and here I was in my late 50s and uh, I came to the realization that I didn't have much longer to live. But my mind just went blank. And as it went blank, I thought, how could I have this disease? As I was thinking about this, he just puts his hand on my shoulder and he's like, look, there's options for you. The idea with this pulmonary fibrosis is that it is going to get worse. There is no way to stop it. In my situation, the idea of a lung transplant, I shouldn't say it's a no-brainer, but a little bit it is. When you're diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, whatever type of pulmonary fibrosis you have, you'll have many questions. You'll wonder about what medications can be started now and what will happen in the future. Will you need a transplant? Is this something that will be inevitable? And this is why it's important for you to ask for a referral to a transplant center early, because transplant centers can help you understand what the process will involve and where you are in the process. About, oh, six months previous to being listed. I was required to go into a pulmonary rehabilitation program, but I did get in great physical shape. And uh, that's what they want of you as you uh, go into the transplant. I was willing to jump through whatever hoops they asked me to do. There's a very specific window that they're trying to get you in, where you are sick enough to qualify, but not too sick to make it through the surgery. One of the hardest things to do is to remain positive during this waiting period. The period is, it's heightened with anxiety, it's heightened with not knowing when you'll get that phone call. But what you have to think about and focus on is yourself. Focus on staying healthy and active. There are people who maybe are training for a 5K or if they're you know, really motivated, a triathlon or a half marathon or even people who are training for a marathon. And, and so they do all the research and they learn about what's the best things to eat and how to work up to the actual running of that. And for me, my whole life is about training for this transplant. I was sent down six different times on the possibility of receiving a transplant. And finally, uh, on October 31st, 2013, I went down for the seventh call and uh, they put me into surgery, got out uh, that evening around 10 p.m. and was put into intensive care. I was in the hospital for 22 days and lived in Chapel Hill to recover for another two and a half months. I started to feel a little bit odd and then it was that evening that I actually went into uh, full trauma, so to speak, in which I experienced what they call an acute exacerbation. My lung function just plummeted all at once. And my friend rushed me to the hospital, uh, got to the nearest trauma hospital at UC Irvine, uh, was stabilized there, but I thought I was gonna come out of the hospital in a matter of a day or two. Didn't happen. And that's when they said, okay, if you want a lung transplant, you gotta work for it. And that's what I did. Fast forward, it was the morning of the 25th that I actually was given the call that there was a potential donor for me. So we went in and I woke up the evening of the 26th with two new lungs. I'm on 11 different medications, uh, including uh, vitamins and minerals. In the very beginning, I was taking upwards of about 48 to 54 pills a day. Uh, right now, it's tempered down to about 26, which is half of what I had before. Three of those particular medications are all um, immune suppressant medications to prevent a rejection. My dietary side has changed greatly because, you know, there's a lot of restriction on what you can and cannot eat. I've always had this saying as uh, I talk to transplant patients, I don't just transplant you, I transplant your whole family, even though you physically will be getting the transplant. The reason why is because there'll be times when you're not able to speak for yourself or you may be too sick that you may need help. I have an unbelievable support system.
system. I have a niece, uh, my niece Lindsay, who is pretty much like a daughter to me because I don't have my own children and she has been incredible. Her and her husband, they were the ones who decided the last minute that they were going to take care of me post-transplant. I would not be here and I truly know that as a fact of life. I would not be alive if it wasn't for my village. Time is very different for each individual patient. So whether you're just being diagnosed, whether you just got on the list, or whether you just got transplanted, remember every day counts. I am actually two and a half years post-transplant. And right now, as far as my health goes, I am doing phenomenally well. well I've been very blessed in that I've had very few complications from the transplant. And I'll be going on eight years this October. So my advice to people is basically just keep an open dialogue with your medical team. Transplantation isn't for everyone. You know, and that's one thing that I did learn because there's so much criteria that goes into qualifying first and foremost before the hospital even accepts you into the program. Do your research and really reach out to other people who have been there. And I feel like one of the best ways is to go to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. They have an amazing website with all kinds of resources, both for you to read or um, even their support groups. Don't let it get you down and just keep fighting. Just powering your breath, not only in the ability to breathe, but in the ability to share that breath with other people. It's manakaha, it's the power of my breath that I'm sharing with you. I don't take any breath for granted. Not at all, not ever. <laughs> Grateful for every single one that I can take. <laughs>